And hello, this is Justice Denied. I am David Shore. Now, I just came from the post office. I wrote a book, Families Destroyed. This is the receipt with the tracking number going to Governor Eric Holcomb, H O L C O M B. Now, what I'm going to tell you is that I'm hoping that this is going to make it to the governor's office. I just sent it today, so hopefully it will make it to him. Now, I'm just bringing out my book. This is my book, Families Destroyed. Now, if you're wondering how you can get a copy, go to Amazon.com. As you can see right here, that is a name you can use. This is how the book looks. Now, what I'm going to say is 100% the truth. Indiana is one of those that is going to be re over actually overhauling their Department of Child Services or Child Protective Services. They're overhaul overhauling it because they got 10 appeals from the Department of Child Services over wrongful terminations of parental rights. I believe it's going to be a little bit more deeper than that. I think what it is is that too many people have complained of what Child Protective Services or CPS has done. They have done irreparable damage, irreparable harm done to families, families such as yours and mine. Now, the book has my story in it. You want to know about my story? Get the book. It's at Amazon.com, $9.99, actually $9.99, sorry, trying to talk here. It was published on Christmas Eve of last year. If you've been on Facebook, on Families Forward, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you don't know what I'm d talking about, then... Go ahead and get on Families Forward Project on Facebook. If you've been fighting Child Protective Services, then this is what I suggest. Now, this is just a suggestion, but get a copy of my book. It has in my story what you should do. Not necessarily what is, what Child Protective Services would uh, have you do. And that is ignore it. But more and more states are either overhauling or repealing, getting away with, abolishing Child Protective Services and convert it back to law enforcement. Now, I'm not saying that there's no children that are being abused, that all CPS does is just kidnap children. What I am going to tell you is this. Child Protective Services, all they care about is money. There are children right now that are being abused. They're being abused by their biological parents. Who are they? I can't tell you. You probably already know someone. Maybe you suspect it. Unless you see bruises or unless you see the children starving. Do them it. And everyone a favor. You, you know, just watch, observe. If it's something simple as a parent allowing their child to play in their their yard, either front or backyard, by themselves, that's not abuse. That's not neglect. That's just allowing the child to, you know, have a little freedom. You're still watching them, but my book is going. To the governor's office. It should be there by tomorrow. And when it arrives. I'm hoping Governor Holcomb will read the book. He'll say hey. Wow this uh, David Shore. What he says in the book. If this is what's really going on. Well. Then maybe I should. Take a bit closer look at this. Now, he may 
pass it over to Department of Child Services director. Well, the current director and the current Indiana Attorney General are currently looking at DCS. They're looking at how to overhaul it, looking at cases. But it's kind of interesting that on June 9th of last year, when those 10 appeals hit the appellate court for wrongful termination of parental rights. And if you say, well, they're just trying to uh, get their children back. They don't want their drug addicts or something. No, they're not. They were people, mostly women, that had their parental rights terminated without due process. That means he didn't go to court. DCS decided, hey, guess what? We're just going to terminate the parental rights. We're not going to have them in a courtroom. We're going to have a court date, but we're going to make sure that they do not know until after the fact. You should really check it out. Go to Indiana DCS June 9th, 2018. But get prepared, because when you see what the appellate court did, because they seriously admonished DCS. The DCS director said that they violated their parental rights and their constitutional rights under due process. This is under the new director. So, like I said, just get a copy of my book right here. Get a copy of it. I mean, come on. It's $10. And who knows? You may be the one that needs help. You need to know, well, what do I do? In my book, I go step by step. If you start getting investigated, number one, don't let DCS, don't let CPS in your house. Unless they have a warrant or a court order, they can't do anything. Now, at their school, that's a different story. At your children's school, they can go there and question them. But if they take the children, say, under exigent circumstances, there are judges who are calling them on that. Go to YouTube. There is a video. We're on YouTube here, so go to there. It says... Can CPS lie to take your children? There's three judges. When you see that, your jaw is going to drop because the judge is actually going after the caseworker. There's been other cases whereby the judge has ruled against CPS. There was a prosecutor going after a CPS officer. For falsifying records. It goes on and on and on. You think they don't falsify records? Get a copy of my book. I'll prove you wrong. Indiana Department of Child Services falsifies records. If you think it stops there. Judge John M. Marnuka. I know that my uh, transcripts and my chronological case summary has been altered slightly. I was arrested on July 28, 2008 without any warrant. According to their records, I was not arrested until July 30th, two days later. Yet their video surveillance will clearly show that I was in the St. Joseph County Jail on July 28, 2008. But the warrant did not arrive until July 30th, 2008, when I was in pod A8. They gave me the warrant then. That means from July 28th to July 30th, I was sitting there without a warrant, unlawfully. Now, for those that are saying, well, they had probable cause. And the exigent circumstances and probable cause. Look up the Fourth Amendment against illegal search and seizure. Even if they have probable cause, they have to go in front of a judge. Present their evidence. And then get the warrant. 
not arrest the person, and then get the warrant when the person's sitting in the jail. So I'm just saying, it's now on its way to Governor Eric Holcomb. Let's see what he does, if he does anything. In the weeks to come, I'm also going to be sending copies of my book to the White House, to the Dr. Phil show, and to Trey Gowdy. You should really check out Trey Gowdy. If you don't know who he is, Google his name, G-O-W-D-Y. Trey Gowdy. You'll really be surprised. I'm not stopping. Once a governor sees what I've written, or maybe his assistant sees. Hopefully the governor will have the courage to look at that, and I sent him three DVDs. So, in conclusion, if you think Child Protective Services is for the children, they're more for the bonuses that they get. Check out the Adoption and Safe Families Act of 1997, signed by then-President Bill Clinton. And hey, if anybody knows Hillary Clinton, who sounds like she's running for president again in 2020, this was her crowning achievement, she said. Well, if it was her crowning achievement, how come innocent families are being torn apart? All because of money. Four to twelve thousand dollars bonuses just to take the child out of the house. That is actually in the Adoption and Safe Families Act of 1997. And roughly on the average, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to adopt a child out. That also is in the Adoption and Safe Families Act of 1997. Check out Nancy Schaefer's report. The anniversary of her death, her and her husband's murder. It's March the 28th of this year. As for you, CPS, I'm calling you out. You're on notice. Your days are numbered. Your reign of terror is over. <laughs> All you CPS social workers who are not getting paid because of this shutdown. <laughs> I don't care. You can go broke for as far as I'm concerned. And now you can't keep the children. I hear more and more children are being returned to their parents because there's no way to pay for the children that you illegally kidnap. Oh, I also mentioned that. I wrote a nice letter. You want to see the letter? I've got it right here. Two-page letter. To Governor Holcomb. This is a copy. Isn't that real nice? I was nice enough to tell him. Now, people who think that guys like me are crazy. We're not crazy. We are focused. We are going to run Child Protective Services out of business. President Trump, thank you. I salute you. If shutting the government down, even partial will destroy Child Protective Services and convert it back to law enforcement like Texas is proposing, I'm all in favor of it. In fact, President Trump, if you are watching this, do all of us a big favor. Sign an executive order abolishing Child Protective Services, convert it back over to law enforcement, 
Any child abuse cases should have already been taken care of by law enforcement, not by an agency that has become so big and so powerful. Their budgets alone are outrageous. That money should go straight to law enforcement. And you bleeding heart liberals, you talk about separating children from their parents at the border. Nancy Pelosi, Charles Schumer, shame on you. How come you haven't done that to our own children in our own backyard? What, is that politically correct? This is what I want. I demand. Look, you don't want the border wall? Then you tell the President of the United States, we protect our children. Make sure that they are never separated from their families ever again. Doesn't matter if they're black, white, his brown, yellow, pink with purple polka dots. All children and all families matter. This is what we demand. Return all children to their families. CPS has illegally taken these children. No warrant, no court order. They say it's exigent circumstances. I say screw exigent circumstances. Unless there is physical harm done to the child, or unless you can absolutely and positively prove that abuse has occurred, that the child is afraid of the parents. I say this, shut the fuck up. It's time all of us take our country back. Democrats, Republicans, President Trump, Vice President Pence. I put all of you on notice. And especially Judge John M. Marnuka, now Chief Tim Lancaster. Elizabeth Arena, Department of Child Services caseworker for the South Bend offices. Kenneth Downs, also from the South Bend offices of the Department of Child Services. Pam Wisman, my daughter's foster mother and Child Protective Services social worker out of Walkerton, Indiana. I put you on notice. And Elizabeth Hurley, now as a judge. You are all now on notice. I will not stop. And all the judges, prosecutors, police officers, CPS workers, forensic interviews. I put all you also on notice. Your reign of terror is now over. If I were you, I'd keep those bonuses what's left and I'd start running because we're coming after you all the families that has had their children illegally taken and if you say well we haven't violated any laws how about the fourth amendment of illegal search and seizure my book points that out my book points out the um, Individuals with Disabilities Education Improvement Act of 2004 that said, a surrogate parent shall not be an employee, state employee, local employee, or any employee that in, is involved in the education or assistance of a child. What do you think a foster child is? And what do you think a foster parent is? Do yourselves all a favor. All you CPS workers, hide. Because if all of us who've had our children taken away have our say, have our way, you'll be doing time in prison. Think about that. Families destroyed. It's at Amazon.com, $9.99. I would suggest that you get a copy. If you have Kindle, download it. Ebook, 
You can get it for free. At least as far as I know you can. Even if you can't, it's like maybe two or three dollars. So, let's take our country back by taking our children back. That, and we do it in our own backyard. We take care of things in our own backyard first. And guess what? The country would be a better place because we're caring about each other. Not about what Charles Schumer, Nancy Pelosi, Maxine Waters, Rudy Giuliani, President Trump, Vice President Pence, uh, whoever. Let's care more about our own backyard. Let's care less about what these multimillionaires and billionaires say. There was a saying was it, when I was in prison. These people going to put money on our books? Are they going to put it into our account? Are they going to pay our bills? Are they going to pay our rent or our mortgage? Are they going to put gas in our cars? Are they going to, you know, any repairs we need? Are they going to do anything for us? Have they done anything for us? Have them actually prove what they've done since the November 2016 general election? What has actually happened? Think about that. Don't think about, well, look what Trump has done. Look at what your representatives have done. That is what you should look at. Look at what they have done. Is the economy better now than it was when President Trump was first elected? How about four years ago? How about since 2008? Is the economy better now? If it is, then how come CPS has to keep on taking children? How come they just don't do something like stop them? Just say, okay, CPS is not needed anymore. We're going to convert this back over to law enforcement. And the answer, money. How many are going to yell, holler, and scream? No, we have to keep them. See how many Democrats and how many Republicans bulk at my idea of abolishing CPS. Child Protective Services at one time served a purpose. Now, it's kidnapping children. Detroit, Michigan. They found 123 children. They didn't say the percentage, but a good majority of those children were ones. I understand, and you'll have to verify this, that their DCS, Department of Child Services, supposedly it, they were there. Guess what? They were found sex trafficking. And what about Native American women and children? They're disappearing at an alarming rate. Yet nobody talks about that. Yet we're going to worry more about the children, the families on the border. Yet our children, the government comes in, CPS comes in, no warrant, no court order. They say exigent circumstances, they take the children, violate due process entirely. Because if they have time to interview the child, how come they don't have time to go over to a judge, show them their evidence, and see what the judge says? My sincere hope is that you're getting upset. You're getting angry. Do something. Do more than just talk. Okay? You want CPS gone? Protest. Call your senators and congressmen. Call to the White House. Hey, the government's shut down now. Maybe now's a good time to talk to Charlie Schumer and little Nancy. Mm. 
You see, I'm not even going to call her by her last name. But Nancy Schaefer, if she were alive, she'd tell you it's a very corrupt agency. She gave copies of her report in 2010. On March the 28th, 2010, her and her husband lost their lives. They say it was a murder-suicide, yet her husband has no history of mental illness. And I have spoken to someone who says they were the most loving couple. She knew them away from the crowds. A couple that, a man that goes, just suddenly snaps. No. So. I know I keep on going in circles. But Child Protective Services is not your friend. My book has just got a small percentage of the overall stories that are currently out there. I know a woman in Canada who's fighting to get her son back from CPS. I know another person a former CPS worker. I will not reveal this person's location or sex. But this person has inside information. This person knows that CPS workers falsify their documents. Why? Because if they told the truth, they'd lose funding. Or at least their funding would be severely reduced. You think I'm lying? Why do they keep on asking for more and more money? Oh, we need more workers. Yet they don't hire more workers? Yet they get more money? Carlos Morales. Check him out. He's a former Texas CPS investigator. His story is also in my book. I am going to continue fighting until there's no breath left in me. And for every one of me, there's ten more just waiting. Families, Family Forward Project. It's on Facebook. Check it out. We have a licensed lawyer. She goes around. The states that are either overhauling or abolishing CPS. I have to believe she had something to do with that. Thank you. And remember this. At any time. Anywhere. CPS could take your children. Under false allegations. They could tell you, oh, we're not going to take your children or anything. Then 24 hours later, if that, they'll say exigent circumstances. They'll take your children. You're going to ask for the warrant and they're going to tell you they don't need one. They don't need a court order. That violates the Fourth Amendment right there. You want to know more? Families destroyed. Get a copy.